Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. We're getting close to the 1400 ladder, I promise you. We're currently sitting at 1,363 subscribers, so you know once we get to the 1400 ladder, we'll be able to start talking about climbing up that ladder. <laughs> so, hope you're all having a fantastic day. I got to do a lot of pre-filming uh, before I go away for about a week to deal with my cancer stuff uh, down at Moffitt Cancer Center. So I'm um, doing a bunch of pre-filming to get all this scheduled for you guys. So if I seem a little rushed or if I sound different in all these videos, it's because I'm recording at a bunch of different times throughout the day. So do keep that in mind. Anyway, with all that out of the way, we need to talk about uh, the tier list post Phantom Nightmare because the meta is very diverse right now, um, but once we get Phantom Nightmare, I feel like it's going to be pretty much a three or four deck format, depending on how things go. As always, we have our tier one, tier two, and rogue in our patented booty, booty, butt cheek category. Y'all know by now what this means. It means that uh, if your deck is garbage and you're sitting at table 500, it's probably, no, not probably, it is booty, booty, butt cheeks. So if you don't see a deck on here, feel free to comment down below where I think it would be. <clears throat> to be quite honest, I think if it's not on this list, it's probably in the booty, booty, butt cheek category. Also, I say this in every video because I know every tier list looks different. I don't know how to make one for the life of me, so I just pull someone else's. I guess they listed all the decks here. Um, I think it could have been more, but we'll talk about that later. Um, going off right out of the gate. Tier 1's fucking Fire King. This deck is busted AF. <laughs> if you are not playing a deck to beat Fire King or playing Fire King itself, you're doing yourself a massive disservice. Same goes for Rescue Ace. Both these decks, I feel like, are kind of tied at the hip to an extent. I've actually seen some Rescue Ace decks playing a Fire King engine and vice versa, which I think is interesting just, you know, for testing the waters to see how they can kind of interact with each other. Not necessarily a good or bad concept, um, but these decks are absolutely insane, especially Fire King with how much interruption it has. You know, people say that in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2024, every deck is just put out a bunch of negates and see if you can break the board. But Fire King is very different in the sense that it just puts out a bunch of interruptions. It doesn't really put out any sort of negates. Like, yeah, Mascarena is a good interruption, but it's not a negate. Like, they can establish an Apollosa if they're playing Apollosa, but some builds aren't even playing that. They're playing World Sea Dragons Atlantis, or they're playing the Abomo Whale, or whatever it's called. Uh, Promethean Princess, of course, being an interruption in the graveyard, being able to pop a fire monster. Um, it's just such a resilient deck, has a fantastic grind game, but if they don't open optimally and they just go Bonfire Search for Populous and use Drone Lockbird on them, then they're kind of crapping all over the venue floor. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, Rescue Ace. Similar thing, but it, it's just even better now because I've even seen some builds playing Transaction Rollback, which I think is hilarious. Uh, and then, of course, just the Snake Eye stuff in general, making it a much more explosive deck. Also here at the Tier 1, I'm putting Labyrinth. Transaction Rollback is an amazing card, and you have to keep in mind, too, that we get the Truffle Wuffle, or whatever the hell it's called, in Phantom Nightmare, where it's like a D-barrier, but it's specifically uh, for monsters. So, you can activate it and call a monster, and then that monster can't be summoned for the rest of the turn. And then you can banish that same truffle trap from your grave to declare a monster, and it can't activate its effects until the end of the turn. So, you know, you activate that and you use rollback, you can call two monsters. So if you're playing against Cash Tira, you can call, say, like Fenrir and Unicorn. Uh, and then, yeah, same as with Fire King, they're going to be crapping all over the venue floor. So, very interesting um, to see where that's going to go. And even just with Transaction Rollback right now, the deck is just phenomenal. So, I think that these are going to be the main three decks to beat or that you need to be playing to beat the other contenders um, if you want to see some kind of success. Now, moving on, Mana Diem. I know some people were saying at the beginning of the format, it's Tier 1. I think it's tier two just because of the fact that it too also loses really hard to a fucking Droll and Lock Bird. Um, but there's a lot of different ways where you can play the deck. You can make it a King Calamity Lock deck. You can make it just a put out a bunch of negates with the, a, a, what's it, the Beasts Armatarera, whatever the trap is. And then it's like an Infernity Barrier. You have those options available to you. Um, but I just don't see it as a tier one contender. I think it's more of a tier two strategy than anything else. Moving on here. Um, Salad is garbage. I don't care what anyone says. Unless, like, I'm at a regional and you're playing Salad, then I'll lose this Salad every time. I can be playing the best deck in the room. I don't know why. I will always lose a Salad. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I always lose a Salad. Just like someone having a Nibiru. They'll always have the Nibiru shoved up their ass just to beat me. 
Um, Kesh Tira. I feel like Kesh Tira's rogue. It's very interesting as like a control stun deck, right? Like just being able to banish everything, you know, hit the opponent with a shifter and like you pretty much just win. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can play it. I saw a really interesting 60 card like Zodiac a hybrid build that also had, I think it also had some cash tier cards, had adventure cards. It was a 60 card pile of good stuff. Very interesting, but I still feel like uh, cash tier is very much rogue. Um, yes, I actually feel that mana diem is better than cash. You know, cash tier is at full power minus a rise heart, but there's a reason why a rise heart was, or rather is still banned um, because it's just such a power card. Like it, it carries the archetype on its back. Um, Flunder is very rogue. It fucking loses to itself. I don't know how many times I have to say it. Uh, Tear is very much rogue. There's going to be players that just, I remember people saying this about Mermel back in the day, and it applies to Tear Element. I remember one of my buddies said, people will play Mermel until their dicks fall off. The same with Tear. They're going to play that deck until their dick falls off. Um, let's see. Runic. This is like all variations of Runic. I feel that it's Tier 2. Um, Fountain being at two, and like if Fire King pops off, and they just have all the interruptions. Like even if you're playing the Buy Steel Joshua Schmidt or Electric Boogaloo build, like Buy Steels don't do shit to, to Fire Kings. Like you can maybe hit a Dark here and there, or like they're not gonna be playing any Light Monsters, so it's kind of like whatever. Um, but I feel like overall as an engine, it's still definitely in the tier two category. Um, <sighs> this goes for like every Ritual deck ever. Silent Force and Dry Charm by extension. I don't feel like Silent Force is going to be as good in the TCG as it is over in the OCG. And I think that's just because of the fact that it's Dry Tron Syndrome. Like, wherever Dry Tron would be placed on a tier list, which in this case would be Rogue, it's just not on here. Silent Force can go in there as well. Uh, or, excuse me, Voiceless Voice, which is the stupidest name I've ever heard in my life. It's like the deck name Based, if you remember that from a couple years ago here on the channel. Um... Silent Force, it, I've played it, it's cool, but it just seems like it's so clunky. Like, you can do cute things in Drytron, like going for the new Arcana Force Fiend to get you to the world, and it's like, cool, I just, I don't see it here in, in the TCG. Uh, Vanquish Souls Rogue, it's very rogue. Uh, along with that, we're also going to put Centurion. And I say that because of the fact that, like, Vanquish Soul has an amazing Centurion matchup. The problem with Centurion, coming from your boy, the self-appointed Centurion King, 10th place, let's go, don't at me. <laughs> um, everybody knows what the deck does now. You know, your boy got 10th place because nobody knew what the deck did, and they assumed it was garbage. <laughs> so I was just able to pants everybody. Um, so yeah, it's definitely the rogue category. Like, the Horus cards can be kind of inconsistent, but when it works, it works. Um... I just, yeah, it's it's a damn shame, but I think it's in Rogue. Same goes for Vanquish Soul. It's not an amazing deck. It's it's okay. Uh, when it works, it works. I'm pretty sure this is Goaty. Um, I really don't know anything about Goaty. It, it's kind of like in between the booty, booty, butt cheek category. It's not fully up the butt cheeks, but it's it's kind of here in Rogue. So let, let, let's just put it in Rogue because I feel like it's one of those decks that's got like a big question mark. Like we really just don't know what's going to happen. Um for other decks in the format, like I said, we, we talked about Sprite with Runic. All the variations can kind of go here in Tier uh, tier 2, whether it's like a Sprite variant for higher variant, uh, shove everything into a deck and call me daddy variant, like whatever. Um, at the end of the day, these are going to be your three decks. No matter how many other decks you put into this fucking tier list, um, there's these are going to be the three decks to be. Also, I'm sure someone's going to ask about Cyber Dragons. I've got a couple Cyber Dragon fans out there. That would go in the booty booty butt cheek category. Same for a Romage. All those decks that aren't topping a damn thing, unless it's like a four-man local and it gets top four, um, that's all going in the booty booty butt cheek category. Um, sorry, but your Dark Magician deck that you got fourth place at your four-man local is, is not going to be able to keep up with these three decks. These, these three decks are absolutely insane. Um, but guys, let me know down in the comments if there's any decks that I haven't mentioned in this video. Uh, like I said, it's either going to go in the Rogue or the Booty Booty Butt Cheek category because these three decks are just leaps and bounds and shoulders above everything else. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I got to get back to recording like six more videos for the week. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.